Hey guys, a couple of weeks back I did a brass casting of a Warhammer style dwarf merchant. I even showed a few miniatures that I'd previously painted. Well, all this got me thinking. Would it be possible to cast a Warhammer miniature in the Lost PLA casting style? Now, these are plastic, but they're not PLA. I took a small piece and heated it over an alcohol burner. It didn't smell too good, so plenty of ventilation would be necessary, and it shrank rather than melted, though it did melt a little. Furthermore, it took a lot more heat than PLA typically does. The signs weren't too promising, but I couldn't resist having a go. This is a Warhammer Thunder Tusk Beast Rider set, so the figures are slightly larger in scale than typical, though they're still only a couple of inches tall. As I had doubts whether these figures would actually melt, I didn't want to introduce any other substances. So instead of glue, I used sticky positioning wax to hold everything together. I 3D printed a circular base rather than adding another unknown plastic. This chap is supposed to be riding a tusked beast, so his feet weren't well positioned to stand flat. So I added lots of wax in a way that I hoped looked like rocky, uneven ground. It seemed to work. My sprue base design was deliberately stunted this time. Nice and simple would be best. I had no idea how well this plastic would burn out, if at all, but I aimed to melt out as much as possible. That meant placing wax sprues at low points to encourage this melt out, as well as high points to maximize feed. As usual, a metal flask was placed over the top, then casting investment plaster was mixed and poured in. Before I could use my electric furnace this week, I had to strip it down as one of the coils had blown. Luckily, the way I built it made this easy and making new coils was child's play thanks to my coil making jig. But I did notice these recesses were a little charred. Research tells me that burnout ovens are typically vented. So now, during burnout, I leave the lid open just a little to help vent any steam and smoke, and hopefully prolong the coil's life. I didn't stick strictly to the plaster manufacturer's guideline this time, because of the unknown plastic, I went much slower than usual. I soaked the flask at 120 degrees Celsius for two hours, then at 250 for two more hours, which is the usual PLA burnout temperature, then 400 degrees for another two hours, and finally, I increased the temperature 100 degrees an hour until I reached 720 degrees Celsius. Let me introduce you to my new purchase. It's a tabletop electric melting furnace. It has a four kilogram crucible, which isn't massive, but it's more than big enough for any lost PLA casting I've done so far. It has a maximum temperature of 1150 degrees Celsius, but again, that's hot enough for my needs. It will handle copper and bronze happily. As is typical with electric, it's easy to operate and a pleasure to use. Feed the crucible, Click the switch, select the temperature, and wait. Now, electric isn't fast, but just a little over an hour had this one melt in copper. I'm stirring with a carbon rod. This scoops out any dross which sticks to the rod as it stirs the content to make an even fluidity.
In truth, I wasn't expecting anything good. But look at that. Here it is with the plaster washed away. Sure enough, it's a little rough. My guess is that there's residue left behind by this plastic, and that's created an almost leather-like finish. But look at the detail. Look at that chain. I'm actually amazed. Other than cutting away the sprues and piling these down, I didn't want to do anything else with this casting. It's not perfect, but I didn't think it would be possible either. And please remember, it's massively magnified on your screen. In real life it looks great, and the detail pops far more than any of these floors. I don't think I've ever said this about anything I've cast before, but I would actually buy this piece if I found it in a store. The floors somehow look in keeping with it, like a museum piece. I'm truly delighted with it. But maybe that's because I wasn't expecting it to work at all. So here you go guys, not quite lost wax casting, not quite lost PLA casting, but using the same technique it can produce interesting results. And I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. So take care guys. And thanks for watching.